Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Fireman Dan, and welcome back to Space Engineers. So today I'm going to show you how to make retractable landing gear like you see behind me here. And just to show you an idea what it is. Retractable landing gears. And as you see, I got these mirrored here, and what is this useful for? Well, it can be used for any ship. And it can be used instead of a actual wheels, you can use it for the landing gears themselves. Um, and what I usually do, since I have this as a blueprint, if I want to use these, right, I got a left and I got a right. What I got to do is cut this off, come over here and, and grab this, and boom. And I'll just paste it on the whatever grid I want. Oop, I do not wish to respawn. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need, we need to build ourselves a little base here. Right? So, uh, that. Come up a few blocks, get it up out of the air. Uh, some power onto it. Some way to uh, test it. And a way to change the settings. Alright, now next, we are going to turn on... Been a little bit too long since I played. Some All right, so let's come out here a couple, a couple of blocks. Now, first things first. We're gonna come down here, and we're gonna need a sidewall, right? And we'll just throw it out there. We'll set it how long we want after bit. Now, from here, you have two options. You can use either a hinge or you can use a rotor. This one I used a rotor. And, but on this version, I'm going to use a hinge just to show you guys this right here. And you can use whichever one you want. It'll just be a matter of setting the settings how you want them. And by that, you'll see what I mean. Now I'm going to turn off symmetry mode real quick. I'm going to place this down. The reason being is, if you see these little white lines right here, this is the negative value, right? So whenever you take, take this as a negative percentage, right? So access this, hinge. This right here, the lower limit's negative, or the velocity, negative. Yeah. The hinge will turn towards just that double yellow, or double white line, which is up here. This is negative, this is positive. In symmetry mode, whenever you place the hinge down, they flip flop. Right, so if I put this one like I wanted it right here with a negative up, when this one got placed down, the negative will be facing down. And when you're sitting there adjusting settings, it, well, it's a pain in the butt, let's put it that way. Alright, symmetry mode back on. Now, symmetry mode obviously doesn't work on a subgrid, so I'm going to have to build both of these wheels individually. Now, on this one, as you see, when, when I built this, I, uh, I put them so that it rotates out in a way, right? It, it gives us room to rotate. Uh, and if you look right here, you see what I mean? You got, you got these blocks coming in and, and it's skedaddled off to the side. But with the recent update to where these blocks can glide past each other, it doesn't matter as much. So I'm going to come down one, two, right? One, two, two. There we go. Now let me access this control panel right here. And I'm going to, so hinge one was on the right. So I'm going to call this right gear, gear hinge. And you can call it whatever you want. This will be left gear hinge, right? Put them in a group. Landing gear and save it. And we'll turn it on. Alright, so for your lower limit, it's going to be 90 or zero degrees. And the reason being, remember, this these double white lines is negative. As it sits right now, they're at zero degrees. If I would have set this to negative ten, they will retract ten degrees off. Now, on the other one, 
for the upper limit, instead of 90, I'm going to go to 85. And the reason being is I've noticed, especially with the rotors, be very careful if you decide to use a rotor. If these are straight down, whenever you land, and it doesn't, may not necessarily matter if you're building a regular ship, if you want to call it, or a traditional, tr traditional ship, it's basically yours. But in the plane, whenever you, whenever you land, right, you're flying along, that, that initial impact, just like in an actual airplane, whenever you land, you, you got the compression of the struts and the shocks. The same thing happens with these and the rotors. And if you have these at, at uh, per, the perfect 90 degrees, whenever you land, sometimes it'll push the hinge or the rotor back just enough where it, it gets stuck, right? And it's mainly with the rotors. So if it pushes it back, it pushes it back to here. But because you got the rotor limit set or the hinge limit set, this hinge or, or this rotor actually wants to rotate this way up into your plane to try to come all the way back around to its, its uh, limits. These sometimes they just outright bug out. So do not set these at the maximum 90 degrees straight down. Leave them offset, offset a couple degrees, five degrees in, in the direction that they're going to retract. Now, also, these ones are retracting forwards and up. You can have them retract backwards and up by simply just flipping it around whenever you place it on your plane. Or you can have them re retract sideways and up, up into, say, your wing if you wish. However, if you retract this up into the wing, keep in mind, look at the length, the width of these, the block for, for, the, for the wheels, right? This, you're going to have a, either, if you want to cover them fully, you're going to have a pretty chunky wing. Or maybe you may have to have the wheels stick out a little bit. If you're building a regular ship where you're not necessarily using wings, uh, it may not matter. You can have it retract fully. Just bear that in mind. And it all comes back to your creativity and your design and how you want to do it. So next up, you're going to come in here. Groups. Landing your hinges and just hit reverse, right? And then set this to velocity. I usually get about 3, 3 RPM. That seems like a decent speed. So I'll retract down. And I'll retract down. Alright. Now, from here, we simply put the wheel on. And if a little extra, if you want. Alright, so like right here, I come down and I came over one. And the reason I did this was when I built this, I wanted it to uh, kind of center up a little bit, right? Because instead of it, if I would have put this right here, then this wheel would have been way over here, right? So I, I just, you know, made a minor adjustment, and we'll do that over there. And the second one, which I don't have one here, is on one of the one of the planes I built. I actually stuck a spotlight right here, and it was essentially a landing light. So let's go ahead and do that. And you don't you don't need a spotlight. You don't have to. It's just pretty cool for aesthetics and everything, holding a plane and such. I'm going to use the regular spotlight. I'm going not to, I'm not going to use the offset spotlights because I've noticed they tend to, the hitboxes are different on them. So I'll grab a regular spotlight. Now the wheel. So let's come over here. Oops. Okay. Right. We'll put that over there like that. And that over there like that. How do I do this one? So I just offset it once. And down. Actually, that's getting a little long, so let's do this. Take that off, put that there, take that off, put that there. I'm going to do 
that way. Uh, no, because these ones are on the inside, so I'm just going to take those back off, drop back off, just go straight with the wheel. So this one, is the left side. This one will be the right side. And you do not have to use your 3x3 three three wheels or the off-road wheels. You can use the 5x5 five five if you want. Do not use the 1x1s. One Alright, and here's why. Let's show you this right here. See how small this is? If you look, the wheel like barely covers the suspension block. And the same thing as what I was telling you about about the compression right here. When you land it compresses a little bit. The same thing for these wheels. And I've tried this in numerous configurations and I constantly break the wheel. I come down and land, boom, wheel's broken. Don't use one by one. If you want to use it, if you can find a way to make it work, well, more power to you. But I would, I would recommend against it. So now, let's see, we put the wheel left on, so let's call that left wheel. Always right. And just for the time being, I'll do that. That way I can clear up my control panel, do this, so I can clear up my control panel, or I should say clean up, let's get rid of these two, so I clean up my control panel. So now, when we hit retract, we have retractable landing gears. Now you can shorten these up a little bit by putting the spotlight right here if you want, your choice. Now up next, you can either leave this as it is, and then build the plane around it, or you can do what I did right here. And as you see, I, I kind of built the frame, and the reason I built the frame like this was I knew every time I pasted this on, all I got to do is, well, fill in the blanks. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pop these up. Right. Now, as this sits right here, those wheels may hang down a little bit, as you see. And I was perfectly okay with that, with them hanging out just a little bit. And the reason being is, if I forgot to put them down, at least I still had, you know, something to actually come down onto. But if you want them to, if you want them to retract all the way up in, you can. Instead of having this at the bottom of your plane right here, you can put another block in and it'll cover this up, or you can have them just rotate up in, up higher a little bit. But the higher you rotate it in, the higher you're going to put this tire as well. Alright, so let's see here. and clean. Now I am using the square block just like this. I'm not putting any angles or anything in because like I said when I built this on the outside as you see just like this all I got to do is come back along and fill in the blanks. So that worked right to there and so right about there. Alright so from here that's probably won't this fit. Yeah, that'll probably fit nicely. So let's drop the wheels back down. Where's that? Is that right here? Mm, 
no, that's not gonna work. So what about this? Back up. Alright. So that worked perfect. So that one's not gonna well it'll go in there. It's just now the question is does that work? So pull that back up. And it squeezes it just fine. So which means I can do that. Side right here. Um, a half block probably won't fit in right there, but I could probably put. Uh, I got it. Let's drop that down. Let's just put a half block in. And a sloped angle block here. And will it go up? Yes, it will. So, which means right here, I could probably put that in, get rid of that. And this block has to stay. Um, this one could probably go. Uh, well, there you have it. Now you, you just get to. You get the gist of it, right? You just fill, fill your frame in how you want, and you just build it as close to the tire as you, just for aesthetics, right? And don't worry how the outside looks, because when you place this on your aircraft, you are going to, like I said, you're just going to fill in the blanks around it and make it look pretty. But as it stands right here, you got two working tires or, or wheels. You got working landing lights, and you do not need the working landing lights. Just replace it with, with a, a metal block. And well, that's all there is to it. Now, I some something else you can do is I have a video on my channel about what flashes subgrid wheel control, and I'll I'll link that down below. But if you put that script on your plane or your aircraft, you can actually control these wheels just like you normally would. And so you can taxi with, like you can turn on, keep your jet engine thrusters off and you can taxi with it if you wish. And just, well, take off normally. Now from here, what I usually do, and you don't have to do this, is whenever I put this on my plane, I will throw a timer block in, in there, right? So I'll throw like two timer blocks on. Right, so two timer blocks. And on timer block one, I will say, so set up action, groups. I will say unlock, reverse, and then start number two. And however long it takes to come down, it's about, I think it's about seven seconds. I'll just leave it at 10. I will say... Lock. And you can throw your landing lights in here on and off as well. And the reason I did this is... Clang. As you're flying around, you don't want these wheels bouncing around. So they will automatically lock and unlock. So let's lock them, right? And this one right here, we will set this up with that of reverse. To trigger the timer block, right? So what will happen when I hit this button, it's going to tr trigger block one, which will unlock the wheels, or unlock the hinge, reverse the hinge, so they're dropping down, and after 10 seconds or less, depending on how you set it, it will automatically lock the hinges back up, right? And like I said, you can have it turn the lights on and off, you can have it turn the wheels on and off as well, if you want. So down they come. they're down and it's still counting down 
see. Oh, so now, the, now if I come back in here, they're going to be locked. Pick up we go. And they're locked. Voila! You got working landing gears. Save this as a blueprint without the timer blocks. You can throw the timer blocks in there if you want. You don't have to. And But I wouldn't put them on the blueprint. I wouldn't put them somewhere else in the plane. And just add this stuff in as you're building it. Right? So you got your, you got your blueprint. Paste it down whenever you go to build a plane. Cut, cut them off. Take that. And just, boom, paste it on your aircraft. gentlemen, Iron Man Dan, if you enjoyed this little retractable landing gear tutorial, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. If you want me to want to see me do something, see me some kind of tutorial, or some kind of idea you're having trouble with, let me know, and we'll check it out. See you guys. That's not what I think. See you guys next time on Space Engineer.